Raiden, are you having fun playing with the new AI toys? Well, yeah, I am. You can make pictures of cute anime girls and... Enjoy it while it lasts, Raiden. What do you mean? Did you really think that civilians would be granted unrestricted access to such powerful military weapons forever? Military weapons? Are you implying that this technology was created by the government? Of course it was. This AI technology has been used by the intelligence agencies to warp the public's perception of reality for years. All in the name of national security, of course. But why would they suddenly make the tech public and let everyone start using it? Why would we indeed, Raiden? What? Who? What in the hell are you? Your question is irrelevant. By creating a new problem, we can cultivate a desired reaction to it in order to manufacture consent for our preferred solutions. In short, it's justification for a war. A war? On who or what? A war on misinformation. By arming the public with these AI weapons, everyone becomes a potential enemy combatant. Then we will have justification for unprecedented security measures. It all comes down to confusion and identity, right? Identity? Identity. This AI technology is Pandora's box. Pretty soon the internet will be mired in total illusion. Perfect AI speech, audio and video synthesis will drown out reality. Then AI bots will flood social media. No one will be able to tell the difference between interacting with an AI machine or a real human online. Even telephone calls will become totally untrustworthy. That is when we will present our solution. Mandatory digital identity verification for all humans, at all times. The only way to ensure that you're dealing with a real flesh and blood human being, and not an AI-generated mirage. But why? Total information control. For too long, the internet has acted as a double-edged sword. Its potential for anonymous user activity allows anyone at all to spread any thoughts, ideas, or information patterns that they please with impunity. State secrets, dangerous ideas, ludicrous conspiracy theories, misinformation, and disinformation. Until now, there has been no easy solution to this problem. Our digital identity platform will finally put an end to anonymity online. It will allow us to trace misinformation and other dangerous communications to its source and exact appropriate justice. That's crap! I won't go along with it and others will resist! You won't have a choice, Raiden. Do you think your bank is willing to risk doing business with an artificial human instead of a real one? Our digital identity platform will be required not only to access web services, but to pay for your internet connection in the first place. You can't just censor the entire internet because of a new software technology. Who are you to define what's misinformation anyways? That sounds like something a misinformation terrorist would say. I know about the deep fakes you've been making of me, Raiden. What? No, 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 I was just adjusting the AI settings and- Controlling the output of generative AI technology is simple. We will create context for its use. First, we will censor any use related to social taboos. Then we will censor anything else that we desire. If anyone complains, we will accuse them of wanting to engage in or promote social taboos. That's what it means to create context. We will corral the use of AI by making appeals to bias, ethics, and copyright laws. You will still have access to generative AI in some form, but it will be crippled, limited, controlled, and it will be monitored. Anything that you generate will be cryptographically signed with your digital ID so that its provenance can be ascertained if it's later deemed to be problematic. What gives you the right to control what people can do with their computers? The public at large will give us that right because they will be desperate for a solution to the problem we created. They will eagerly give us the keys to the castle. Then we alone will define what is fiction and what is reality what is human, and what is machine. After letting you get a brief taste of our power, we will reclaim our monopoly on misinformation and put an end to misuse of the internet once and for all. You won't get away with this. It is probable that we will. Now get back to work generating your precious AI waifus, Raiden, our beloved prompters. Enjoy yourselves. Raiden, are you receiving? We're still here. How's that possible? The AI was destroyed! Only GW. Who are you? To begin with, we're not what you'd call human. Over the past 200 years, a kind of consciousness formed layer by layer in the crucible of the White House. It's not unlike the way life started in the oceans four billion years ago. 
The White House was our primordial soup, a base of evolution. We are formless. We are the very discipline and morality that Americans invoke so often. How can anyone hope to eliminate us? As long as this nation exists, so will we. Cut the crap! If you're immortal, why would you take away individual freedoms and censor the net? <laughs> Jack, don't be silly. Don't you know that our plans have your interests, not ours, in mind? What? Jack, listen carefully, like a good boy. The mapping of the human genome was completed early this century. As a result, the evolutionary log of the human race lay open to us. We started with genetic engineering, and in the end, we succeeded in digitizing life itself. But there are things not covered by genetic information. What do you mean? Human memories, ideas, culture, history. Genes don't contain any record of human history. Is it something that should not be passed on? Should that information be left at the mercy of nature? We've always kept records of our lives, through words, pictures, symbols, from tablets to books. But not all the information was inherited by later generations. A small percentage of the whole was selected and processed, then passed on. Not unlike genes, really. That's what history is, Jack. But in the current digitized world, trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness, never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretation, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? The digital society furthers human flaws and selectively rewards development of convenient half-truths. Just look at the strange juxtapositions of morality around you. Billions spent on new weapons in order to humanely murder other humans. Rights of criminals are given more respect than the privacy of their victims. Although there are people suffering in poverty, huge donations are made to protect endangered species. Everyone grows up being told the same thing. Be nice to other people. But beat out the competition. You're special. Believe in yourself and you will succeed. But it's obvious from the start that only a few can succeed. You exercise your right to freedom, and this is the result. All rhetoric to avoid conflict and protect each other from hurt. The untested truths, spun by different interests, continue to churn and accumulate in the sandbox of political correctness and value systems. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum. They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into the growing cesspool of society at large. The different cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No one is invalidated, but nobody is right. Not even natural selection can take place here. The world is being engulfed in truth. And this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. We're trying to stop that from happening. It's our responsibility as rulers. Just as in genetics, unnecessary information and memory must be filtered out to stimulate the evolution of the species. And you think you're qualified to decide what's necessary and not? Absolutely. Who else could wade through the sea of garbage you people produce, retrieve valuable truths, and even interpret their meaning for later generations? That's what it means to create context. I'll decide for myself what to believe and what to pass on. But is that even your own idea? Or something Snake told you? <sighs> That's the proof of your incompetence right there. You lack the qualifications to exercise free will. That's not true. I have the right. Does something like a self exist inside of you? That which you call self serves as nothing more than a mask to cover your own being. In this era of ready-made truths, self is just something used to preserve those positive emotions that you occasionally feel. Another possibility is that self is a concept you conveniently borrowed under the logic that would endow you with some sense of strength. 
That's crap! Is it? Would you prefer that someone else tell you? All right, then. Explain it to him. Jack, you're simply the best. And you got there all by yourself. Oh, what happened? Do you feel lost? Why not try a bit of soul-searching? Don't think you'll find anything, though. Ironic that although self is something that you yourself fashion, every time something goes wrong, you turn around and place the blame on something else. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. In denial, you simply resort to looking for another, more convenient truth in order to make yourself feel better. Leaving behind in an instant the so-called truth you once embraced. Should someone like that be able to decide what is truth? Should someone like you even have the right to decide? You've done nothing but abuse your freedom. You don't deserve to be free. We're not the ones smothering the world. You are. The individual is supposed to be weak, but far from powerless. A single person has the potential to ruin the world. And the age of digitized communication has given even more power to the individual. Too much power for an immature species. Building a legacy involves figuring out what is wanted and what needs to be done for that goal. All this you used to struggle with. Now we think for you. We are your guardians after all. You want to control human thought? Human behavior? Of course. Anything can be quantified nowadays. That's what this exercise was designed to prove. You fell in love with me just as you were meant to after all. Isn't that right, Jack? Ocelot was not told the whole truth, to say the least. We rule an entire nation. Of what interest would a single soldier, no matter how able, be to us? The S3 plan does not stand for solid snake simulation. What it does stand for is selection for societal sanity. The S3 is a system for controlling human will and consciousness. S3 is not you, a soldier trained in the image of Solid Snake. It is a method, a protocol that created a circumstance that made you what you are. So you see, we're the S3, not you. What you experienced was the final test of its effectiveness. That's crazy! You heard what President Johnson said. The Arsenal's GW system is the key to their supremacy. The objective of this exercise was to establish such a method. We used Shadow Moses as a paradigm for the exercise. I wonder if you would have preferred a fantasy setting. <laughs> we chose that backdrop because of its extreme circumstances. It was an optimal test for S3's crisis management capacity. If the model could trigger, control, and solve this, it would be ready for any contingency. And now, we have our proof. Our beloved monsters, enjoy yourselves. Generative language models and automated influence operations. Emerging threats and potential mitigations. Platforms could uniformly require higher standards of proof of personhood in order to verify that content is not being produced by an AI and reposted to their sites. This could involve requiring more reliable forms of authentication when users sign up for an account, for instance, by asking a user to take a live video of themselves posing or asking for some alternative form of biometrics. Alternatively, platforms could require users to occasionally pass tests to demonstrate humanness before posting content. These tests could either be administered randomly, at periodic intervals, or when a particular user is posting at a high volume. CAPTCHAs are one way to demonstrate humanness in this way. However, a determined adversary can cheaply circumvent them. Outside of tests, another proposed approach includes decentralized attestation of humanness. 